I'm ready. Arrives on a bright and sunny Tigamura as you guys wake up in the little tavern uh, that you have been provided rooms at least for one night uh, to stay in. And you get your long rest, whatever features you might have used during your trade ri train ride over here, all reset. Oh, it's a bright, shiny morning. Uh, let me move our little companions as they would have been somewhere else. And today is the day that your friends from Satya are touted to come visit you by way of the official Olympi teleportation circles that are established throughout the kingdom. Yes, how's everyone's morning go? Hmm. Good question. Uh, word wakes up groggily <laughs> from a, a very rough night. He probably, after the whole thing with Law Districtora, just went out and sat on the roof for a while. Um, he is back in. He is up, splashing water on his face, ready to face his old friend. Uh, who is coming exactly out of the two? I have the two names written down. So you've got... Uh, you've got... Let's see. Claudio. Got and Lyra. Lyra, not to be mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> Lyra. Yeah. And one more uh, that uh, you would know. I've just given you another yeah. one of your lackeys. His name is Squirt. <laughs> okay. A, a newer Squirt. member. More of a nickname. I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Word, you're cleaning yourself up. How's everybody else's morning? Uh, I'm, I think Buck is going to probably get up, I think maybe like before everyone else and just go down and like try to eat breakfast and have coffee before anyone else okay when you do go up, down i imagine he rises early oh. yeah when you rise early you do see since the tavern is a lot less busy you actually see the innkeeper named uh, maro who is an aracocra that looks more akin to a peacock as mentioned by the i think the official that you met and he sees you coming down oh good morning Oh, I love it. I love the design. It's so good. I love it. I hope you slept well. Uh, <laughs> uh, a little bit. Uh, I slept fine. Th thank you for the hospitality. Oh, fine just uh, won't do. Come now, tell me. I'm open to feedback. Oh, no, it's... I, I don't think it had much to do with the inn itself. The, every, all of the accommodations were perfect. Um, it's just that I've... Uh, we've been going through a lot being, you know, the pilgrims and everything, so... I think that's that was probably more of what was contributing to the fitful sleep than the accommodations. Well, then, if the, the accommodations can't ail your troubles, then what good are the accommodations? Come, come. Anything, oh. anything at all. <laughs> oh, no. I couldn't possibly think of a single thing to change about this place. It's mm, very uh, well, it, but I, I will get feedback out of you yet before you get out of here. Right. I will do my best to think, why don't I write something down once I have the full experience and I'm ready to leave? Maybe yes, we can yes, go... Yes, very much. Good, good. Right. Let's go... Let's. How about breakfast? I haven't had breakfast here yet, so breakfast that would be good. Breakfast right and, away, sir. And he goes back into the kitchen and you hear banging of pots and pans and sizzling of some kind of meat. Um, is anybody... So, like, is it, uh... Pam's not here, is she? Pam is not <laughs> here. It's a pretty okay, empty tavern. Okay. There's only like one or two other patrons in here. Okay, I'll just like mind my own business then. I was gonna mind her business if she was in the Ooh. tavern, but she's not. But I, I'll, I'll stand. <laughs> don't ooh me. Um, <laughs> it's the exact thing she I'm said not to do. I'm trying a turn of phrase. I will just wait here for my breakfast and for Morrow to come back. Okay. Or for word to come downstairs. Whatever happens first. <laughs> What does happen first? Am I coming down? I would say that, uh, <laughs> well, that depends on you of how early of a riser you are. No, I think today word is word is sleeping in a little late. Okay, you're gonna sleep. I in. actually think Lara would probably be up quite early today because Shabai is coming and she's worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. There's a there was like a up at the crack of dawn uh, schedule she had when she was back home, and I think she's slipping right back into it with the knowledge that her mentor is going to be here today. So. Okay, you head downstairs, you can see just the odd one or two patron as well as Buck sitting at the table and you hear the sizzling and cooking and kind of a mess sound coming from, from the kitchen. Quite a lot of banging and clanging. <laughs> Morbid curiosity directs me to sit down and wait for breakfast. 
Listen, Lara, when this guy gets back, um, mm-hmm. just give him like a compliment. It seems as though that he's going through something rough, maybe, and wants to. He's very concerned about how we have uh, enjoyed our stay here, so that might go a long way with him. Oh, certainly. I wouldn't want to seem ungrateful. Um, I like tap my like little fingers just uh, awkwardly on the on the table. So you're um you uh. Shamaya is gonna be here today and you're gonna see them for the first time in a little bit? Yes, if all goes according to plan. I don't think I ever really asked you um, what it was that you did for Shamaya. I mean, I know that you, you know, sort of generally took care of problems around the place. I've seen you around uh, Satya, but... Um, I guess I don't really understand the nature of your relationship with Shamaya. That's fair. I was essentially her apprentice. Druids steward the wild and attempt to maintain the balance of nature in places that are colonized by less natural ways of living. And at times problems would arise and Shamaya would go out and fix them. And as I learned and trained, I would join her. this I see as essentially an extension of that. Maintaining mm. the, ha- the health of the tree and the health of Quarencia and the health of Alinthi overall is only a logical extrapolation of maintaining the stewardship of the wild. Right, right. Um, I, Did you have a but, more specific question? No, well, well, it's I, I guess, I don't know that I, I, I don't feel as though I mean, I guess you've seen enough of my previous life on this journey enough. And I know we've talked about, uh, like, you know, we've met Fritz's dad and everything. I mean, did do you, uh, do your parents condone this? Or, I mean, did, I mean, did you, are they in the picture? I just don't get, I don't see a family resemblance between you and Shamai, if, if you don't mind me saying. Well, it's an interesting question. I obviously don't remember much of the early years, but Shamai is the only authority figure that's ever held sway in my life, as far as I know. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, you, you, I guess you, you, what you're saying is you just don't know them. It's not, uh, about yes, I, your parents? I assume they existed at one point. I don't know the specifics myself, and I've never really saw fit to, uh, speculate on things that I cannot know. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Um, I hope I'm not prying too much, I just... uh, No, of course not. It's, uh... Honestly, after seeing Fritz's experience, I am rather glad that we haven't encountered any suspiciously familiar-looking strangers on my end of this uh, this journey. Yeah, I I guess it's fair to say. I hope hope they're doing all right. Um, It seems as though that was kind of a shock for them to see Astrapio. Uh, And so I... I don't, I don't know what else is we I, I don't know what else is in store for them but it seems like uh, I, they've got a lot to figure out um, well hopefully our encounter with her mother and Trevisetta will go any well I suppose we can't speculate what that would look like I'm I, I guess I'm just glad that you know we're all here together to have yes. someone to go through all this with I, I, I'm sure you guys realize that more now that you have people from back home uh, coming in to see us. But you know, I I like well, look down. I, like I, I don't have anybody that's coming to see me, so it's good to have. I, I guess in a way, what I'm trying to say is it's nice to have the three of you uh, to 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 be with on the on this journey. If um, I agree, it it's almost it's it's almost strange. Um, I just woke up. What are we talking about? Oh, hello, Word. We're uh, discussing oh, word. the nature of our blooming friendship over the course of our journeys together. I'll, I'll scoot over oh, so boy. you can get in. I've ordered yeah. food for just me, but we, I'm sure you can get... It sounds like Maru, who, by the way, Maru's the name of the innkeeper, is making a ton of stuff. I hear way too many... There's like only... It's us three and two other people. It sounds like he's making a lot of food back there. Perhaps it will be the face style. Exciting. <laughs> uh, maybe he hasn't like opened the doors yet, and people are gonna come in and eat all of our food. Which means 
when it hits the table, we should eat fast. We must be ready. Ever Correct. Ready. Yes. I was I, just I take a fork and a knife in hand and like hold them <laughs> up above the table because I'm sitting so tiny on it. Aww. Here, I have a. I think I have something in my pack. You could. I have this book that's kind of big, and I, you can sit on this to maybe boost you up a little bit. That's so incredibly kind. Of you. <laughs> that's, it's like that's, a little throne of wisdom. That's sure. And and I would. And I know you can't read, but it's a good book too. So just uh, don't don't move around too much because I don't want the binding to be. Look, what I was trying to say was is that I, I appreciate. Um, uh, it, I I find that there are times throughout our journey where it's been nice to have people to confide in and to have a support system amongst us here. Which I, it's not that I don't have back home. It's just that we. It's nice to have you guys here in case something goes wrong to have someone to have your back and um it, that's good that's like it's been a, i appreciate i i appreciate that that you we're all yes, together that's kind of it's, sad that you've never had that before Wait, he said he did um it's um, fine he's got it at home and, and yeah i mean i've got i mean i've got for, for sure uh, I just know one that wanted to come, I guess. Is, Buck take uh, two fire damage? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, well, I, I guess since in the, in the, uh, being honest sort of way, I, I really, I, I, I don't really have, um, too much of a support system, uh, in Satya. So it's nice to, I feel as though we've kind of helped build that for the purposes at the very least for this adventure and so um i uh, i appreciate that i yes, didn't I've, really I've... didn't really have it back back home i had people i knew and you know i people you go out with and you have people you play cards with and people you work with but uh i didn't really have anybody that would be i think willing to come and check on how i was doing um well, that's irresponsible of them. Well, you've got it now. We've got your back. And I, like, raise my hand really high up and pat you on the back. <laughs> like, the lower small of the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate it. I would, I would, uh, as you can see with some of my um, ex-wives, not, not exactly. <laughs> that in itself, just saying that, I think kind of indicates my ability when it comes to maintaining those types of relationships so I, i'll try not to mess this one up mess these up it's taking a while that morrow guy is just really <laughs> well, <laughs> well maybe morrow wanted you to finish your conversation uh buck i worry you're selling yourself short this isn't a parasitic dynamic yeah we're not romantically involved neither <laughs> Or that. It is neither parasitic nor Buck, romantic. Buck twiddles his thumbs. Oh, we're not. <laughs> Blushes. Did, oh, no. Buck, Buck blushed us. Did Buck worry me nothing to you? <laughs> All right. Then, while you, you were so asked. close. While you guys are conversing, uh, sometime after about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, the, uh, the door to the kitchen kicks open and Morrow comes out with just his wing arms full of plates of bacon and eggs and celery and uh he's just aha my cognition proves me well yet again yeah i knew your friends would come down here and he just comes over and serves you all a plate of bacon eggs and celery give me oh those my. eggs bacon Can I eggs instantly and celery stick my head out of like the upstairs and i do i smell food Yes. I'm just, just down, counting like, you. Breakfast. Wasn't there a fourth one? Ah, there she is. <laughs> you breakfast. I'm just, just like through, through like... the window. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the food. Ah, there we go. And I've got some leftovers for anyone else who wishes to come in here. Now, the rest of you, I've already had your big friend here give me his admittedly wanting feedback, but anything else I can help to improve the tavern? Uh, uh, fluff your pillows or maybe make the beds a bit less soft. I know some adventurers sleeping on on the streets on travel, they prefer more harder beds that it's more familiar. You should get some tinier beds. Mm, tinier beds for small folk. Yes, good, good, good. For kobolds and goblins, you can see he's writing them down on a notepad in his apron. In fact, you, you might be able to get some bigger beds as well for, to, for taller folks. Ah, yes, bigger beds. Perhaps <laughs> uh, you never know. Um, an ogre might want to sleep here. 
Cut to Word sleeping in Buck's bed and Buck sleeping in Word's bed. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we did the like wrong, the wrong bed. We had the wrong room. Buck like on the floor with two legs up on the smaller bed. It's like, yeah, this is close like, enough. Barely fit just his butt. And then Word is just like vanished in the blankets of the cat. <laughs> yeah. Well, enjoy your breakfast and have a wonderful day. Thank you for staying at my inn. Thank and you for your go. hospitality. Morrow goes off to take care of the other patrons. Ravenously devour his bacon and eggs. I want to turn to Lyra and go, weren't they pretty? Yeah. The feathers were very distracting. I honestly have no idea what he was saying for the latter half of that conversation. <laughs> I thought he was flirting with us. I'm having those things like splayed out. <laughs> My predator instincts, I was not able to tell. <laughs> I was intimidated by it. <laughs> I've like so many eyes. I've never, yeah. I've never seen so many Arakaka before in my life. Back home, you know, it's. It's not like many. you live by the, the dock. <laughs> Is that it? Is it just you in there? Yeah, I'm the only Arakaka at the dock. You can be an honorary kobold if you want. <laughs> I, Highest honor. I think Doza would. Pre- I think Doza would prefer me to follow in their footsteps. <laughs> I think that's fair too. Yeah. <gasps> I revoke my honorary noble. <laughs> I wanna. I wanna grab oh. Lyra's hand. Do you think they speak Arakaw? Like, or is it Uran? Uran. Yeah. I, it's been forever. Do you think they speak it? Ooh. It will, would be it's certainly worth before. inquiring. It's been very rare I get to speak with people. Do you think they'd let me practice? I want to try. I want to try. I'm sure. If you told them that it was something that would improve the quality of your stay at the inn. You're right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, first is like, eats their breakfast as quickly as just like sitting there anticipating waiting for them to come back. <laughs> that one annoying person who knows that you know a language and is waiting to practice just sitting there like, jitty. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Whew. But yes, you yeah. now have the day to yourselves. Uh, it seems as though that Morrow doesn't quite bother you, just giving you a glance while you like eat your food. If you would like to practice some, you can flag him over. I'm just intensely staring at him. <laughs> oh god. Give me a charisma check. <laughs> I don't have that charisma. Where is it? Okay. Ooh. All right. Uh, getting. Oh, I did a saving throw. Does that matter? Uh, it doesn't matter. No. Um, <laughs> okay. Pretty sure it's the same role uh, for you as a ranger. Yeah. And uh, kind of like giving him this wide-eyed look. Uh, he's initially a little bit thrown off and not really knowing the intent behind it. But you can, he can notice that you are intrigued. Um, like an owl. Yes. <laughs> and he. Big unblinking. <laughs> he yeah. comes over uh, to your table again. Is there anything I can help you? If- you speak Oran? Of course I speak Oran. It's our native tongue. Really? Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm just really excited by that. <laughs> I see you're a, you're a harpy, Arakakra. You're perhaps not very familiar with the native tongue. Do you know any? The extremely uh, canon harpy, Arakakra, that have always little, existed. They, they try saying, like, I know a little bit, it, but it's like very childish speak, like someone who only learnt, like, child level of speech. Oh, there's no shame. Come on, let's hear it. And uh, you say what little Aaron that you know, and he seems very impressed. He's clapping his hands and giving you a thumbs up. Ah, wonderful. Oh, your teacher must have been very impressive. Aww. Uh, I guess you could say that. (laughs) (laughs) And he gives you a little few bit more pointers um, in kind of some grammatical corrections and uh, Mm -hmm. a few ways to adjust it. And you get a little bit better at speaking Aaron. Yeah. How, How do I sound and carry myself as regally as you. Regally, regal. Like, like they're trying to say regal in Orin and they're like, re- <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a bit too big of a word for them. So they just end up going regal in common. <laughs> <laughs> regal. No, it's okay. You can simply replace a few words. So most Orin also know common. So you shouldn't run into any trouble if you meet another Arakok. Yeah, but every Arakok knows Orin. So I wanna, I wanna know. Yeah, you have a nice time, and uh, yeah, so you know that uh, your friends will be arriving at the official building, kind of down south, the Alinthi Lord's offices, and they will be here pretty soon if you wish to go meet them there. Yes. Cool. Yeah. 
let's go. Wait, roll. like how soon? <laughs> like whenever we're ready soon. All right, that's it. I'm, <laughs> I'm scooping up wood. I'm grabbing Lyra and we're like, we're going to see Dozen. <laughs> I am excited to see Dozen. Fly with me. Sorry, I just, I'm, I, I've just scooped you up without your permission. I'm holding you up. I've done my own. <laughs> As you're running out the door, Word is encouraging it. He's like, now fly. <laughs> fly, my pretties. I'm going to, I'm, I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys to it. I, I, I think I'm going to maybe take this one, go find something else to do, just explore a little bit around town. Maybe see if I can get the uh, cart or something ready to go. We don't have one. Oh, that's right. We do now. Well, well, find find one, or maybe figure that I'm out. Sorry, I, I can do. That. I was just remembering what happened when uh, you know, I'm not pointing any fingers, and I'm pointing both I, fingers at you, like right, finger right. guns. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll be back soon. Uh, perhaps you could spend some time with the adventurers guild. Uh, they seemed rather. Yeah, they might be able to point me in the direction of somewhere that seems like a group that has want for a cart every once in a while. I guess. So. <laughs> That'd be really good if you if you got us like a new one, you know, a, a better one maybe. I mean, who knows? Really? Yeah, maybe yeah. a really good one. Yeah, really you good might one. Fly around or something. Vision of better sat lantern. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, go get it. it like slaps my, you on your thigh. My brain is like envisioning like. <laughs> Like Fritz is trying to like run us out the door, and words like clinging to the door frame, like yeah, new cop would be great. <laughs> Don't fuck this up. <laughs> All right, go see, right, go, see do, go see, go see Dozen, go see Dozen. Right. So you guys, uh, at the behest of Fritz, are pushed out the door, run all the way down to the official building, and you see, just as suspected, your friends from Satya have arrived as they just walk out of the door down here <laughs> and yeah. uh, you see them it is Dozen Shamaya and your lackeys word and Dozen seeing you kind of just runs and leaves behind the other four and goes <laughs> for a big squeeze at you Fritz <laughs> lifting you up high yeah. above him a few of your bones pop just at the force <laughs> no bird bones Hey, a little shite, how you been? <laughs> Dyson! <laughs> oh, it's good to see you, lass. Uh, the duck's been unbearably quiet without you. Uh, I swear some of the fellers are going to start leaping off the crow's nest just so they can see a flying silhouette on the boat again. Oh, oh giving up just because they have to do my manual labor now, huh? <laughs> oh, well, how you been? How is your journey? What drinks have you tried? Good. Oh, goodness. All of them. Is it bad to say I don't remember? <laughs> there was that really <laughs> weird one on the train that gave us all, like, wild magic effects. <laughs> oh, yeah. They drank wild magic things. I'm smarter than enough to not do that. You taught me not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I'm here, I can give a little bit of supervision. You have supervision? I <laughs> supervision to know where the best drinks are, and I see an inn right down there. Better than true sight. Ah, uh, I too have a similar power. Whoa. There's, a, there's an Arakokra at the, the place. Oh. A really pretty one. Did you show them what you learned? Yes. They, they were impressed. They clapped. I think that's good. Why? Because I'm a good teacher. But uh, mm. you, you just uh, don't don't ask them to uh, recite any any longer sentences because I've not really get, gotten to that chapter yet. But uh, I so uh, if if you don't mind all, and he uh, gestures over to the rest. Uh, what say if it's if it's all good to you? I'd like uh, to go on a little bit of a prowl with uh, with little Fritzy here, if 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 all is well to you. Go for it. Of course. So then I've got business to tend to. Enjoy the day. He puts. He tries to put an arm around your shoulder, Fritz, uh, just kind of like asking <laughs> you to lean down so he can whisper to you. Oh, I I'll like, I'll like <laughs> lean down. I like, basically, I'm on my like. I have to go on my knees to be his height. <laughs> so, does Arakokra? Is it a, is it a sweetie of yours, or is it a handsome or pretty one? I know you got the riz to make a pretty ladder last faint. Huh? Riz. <laughs> 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 Dozen it's, riz. No, it's it's just a, a peacock. They, 
pretty as the whole uh, the whole thing. <laughs> oh, 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 then that should be easy. You're my spitting image after all. <laughs> uh, uh, how about you and me go take on the uh, prowler all around the town? Yeah, slam some drinks. I haven't been this far inland before, so I want to see what kind of brews they got. That's a sea ain't salt in their liquor. Oh, I, I look up at the sky. What time is it about right now? Uh, it's like <laughs> 1 to 2 p.m. Yes. Yeah, it's late enough to drink. It's all right. It's something light. I mostly just want to try the flavors rather than to, you know, get knocked out. Mm-hmm. And he is going to explore the town with you before heading to the tavern. And so while he heads off, uh, you, uh, Lyra and Word. Uh, Word, <laughs> you are approached by your lackeys, Claudio, yeah. Lyra, and Squirt. <laughs> and Squirt. And uh, she just comes up to you, and they're all just kind of bouncing back and forth on their little <laughs> kind of cobalt feet, just hopping in excitement. Hey, boss! It's good to see you, boss! Oh, we missed you so much! We hadn't had so much direction when you were gone. We've mostly just been doing things by committee, and making, uh, making decisions is scary. Committees are terrible. I'm so sorry you've had to work under such conditions. Oh, Without such my person. guidance. I don't, we don't know how you do it, boss. Making decisions all the time. It takes a general's wisdom. Oh, please, guide us. All right. How's business been since I've been gone? Our business has been good. Uh, we've actually been helping out around some of the farms and making a little bit of gold ourselves, actually. Yeah. So you, you've, uh, you've stepped down to making an honest earning. Well, we kind of had to. Uh, without your guidance, kind of sneaking around and skulking about and trying to take coin, you know, in an honest way, uh, hasn't been too successful. That bigger tragedy I never heard. <laughs> All right. I'll remind you exactly how we do it. Ooh. Come with me. <laughs> and they we're, all like, walks off. slink along <laughs> behind you. <laughs> And lastly, uh, Lyra and Shemaya. Shemaya comes up to you. She just kind of watches as the kobolds wander off and That's sh bad. <laughs> shrugs, her, shrugs her shoulders a bit. Uh, perhaps, hopefully, nothing we need to worry about. I suspect the local adventurer's guild will take care of anything too cataclysmic that word gets into. Mm, yes. Uh, good afternoon, Lyra. You look well. You're fairly unharmed. That's good. Thank you. You as well. Yes. I brought some apothecary supplies that you might find useful on your journey. Just some basic ingredients from the garden. It wouldn't afford any peculiarly, uh, particularly outlandish brews, but at the very least, perhaps, ones that will aid you nonetheless. Oh, she hands you helpful. a little pouch, and you can add alchemy supplies to your inventory. Uh, so it's enough ingredients to make five total potions. And here, I'm going to copy and paste this into the chat. So you can see, mm -hmm. there we go. In order to brew any one of these, you need to make a successful medicine check. If you fail, then the unfortunately the ingredients will go to waste, but you have enough to make five <laughs> potions of any of the listed. Oh my goodness. Let me just copy and paste these bad boys into my notes. Wow. So then, what okay. is on the agenda for the day? Anything in particular you wish you, to, you wish to spend? This day on, I've a mind to pick up a few things from the markets myself, but you're the one on pilgrimage. You've not had the chance for as much leisure as I have. Yes, well, I didn't exactly have leisure on the mind today. We uh, made some interesting discoveries when we were dealing with the previous dragon, Sergei, and I was hoping to consult with you about certain properties of the life tree that you may be able to enlighten me on. Yes, I, you mentioned uh, a bit as much when we last spoke. Yes. Very well. Uh, shall we walk and talk, then? Yes. There are many very beautiful and rather untouched nature areas in this uh, in this town. Yes. Perhaps. For yes. the proximity it has to Tretasetta, I always grew fond of Tigamura and their respect for the natural wildlife around them, keeping the balance, as it were. Yes. yes. As long as we avoid the bullet cave, we should be fine. I will refrain from asking questions. Probably wise. And <laughs> yes, and lastly, Buck, you are all on your lonesome in the tavern. Mm -hmm. Do you wish to head to the Adventurer's Guild? 
Not um, immediately. I think maybe I'll try and help. Um, oh gosh, I've already forgotten his Morrow? name. The Maro. Uh, maybe clean up the um, all of the different uh, you know plates and stuff that were left behind. Maybe just like because I have no, I really don't want to go to the adventures. Uh, okay. Because <laughs> I know who's there. I I maybe eventually, but for right now, I like I'm trying to put it off. So I'm like, oh, I'll help clean up. All right. Well, um, you do, and Maro actually is shocked at you cleaning up and he notices and he goes oh goodness no oh you don't have to do that oh no that's fine i i really i want to i mean you you you've given us a lot of you know hospitality i figure it's only right that i help clean up a little bit well, so of course I that's my job unless you want to be paid for your work you i insist come on please ah uh, being paid in hospitality and the company of a good friend you know. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, I didn't consider myself. Unless, you, it, well, unless you don't feel that way. I know we just met and all or anything. It's forget. I'm, I'm, I just, I got a lot on the mind, really, and this kind of helps me take off, take the old mind off of. Is there a, um, <laughs> is there like a? You play cards at all, Maro? Or <laughs> oh, God. Oh, on occasion, but please tell me more about this on your mind. You, I can lift that weight off of you if you need. Ah, uh, no, I just, maybe, I, maybe if we put out a hand or so, you know, of the uh, cards, I might be more willing to talk about it, if you, if you have time, that is. Hmm, um, well, you it's could, not rush you could, hour now, if no more patrons come in, then I'm sure I could spare some time. Okay, good, and then I'm gonna, like, go and sit down and, like, start shuff, riffling through the deck uh, of the cards that I have on me, Yeah. and just, like, throw out takes a bit of the plates and kind of stacks them in a spot and goes to play cards with you. So, we have four different stories going on here. Uh, we can either roll for initiative to see who does their story first before swapping over to each one of you. I will be upfront and say that uh, perhaps we will go through each story to their conclusion before moving on to the next. Unfortunately, that will mean that some of you, it may be a while before we get to yours, if that is okay. Yeah. Um, or alternatively, we can volunteer who goes first. I'm down to roll initiative. It's yeah, I think fun. rolling initiative yeah, is probably the most fair. like right. fair. Roll initiative. Yeah, that might be D and D way. Story <laughs> you shall pursue first. Oh boy. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I can't do that. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the first up... <laughs> All right. First up is going to be Fritz and Dozen. I... <laughs> now, Do you and uh, Dozen kind of peruse the markets a little bit in uh, kind of the upper right area, and just kind of looking through. You can see Dozen is taken in by the various different types of trade that he's not all too familiar with and almost taken in by, although he's got a tight grip on his coin purse each time he sees something. He's like, oh, should I? Uh, nah, nah. I don't I don't need it, <laughs> but it could be a really nice souvenir. Ah, it'll be fine. When he starts looking at things, Fritz like is almost like leaning over, peering. Like, what are you looking at? Uh, mm -hmm. It's just mostly little trinkets, things to decorate the Nardo and, and such. Uh, nothing really <gasps> tangible, but uh, the shinies do catch my eye too easily. Mm, I I like swivel around to what he was looking at and point at. Hmm. What am I pointing at? I point at like a uh, type, like a small pot of paint. Hmm. And we go, that color would look really good on your wheel. Ooh. Perhaps what kind of color do you point at? It's like a deep blue. Hmm. Oy. Oh, and this one would do nice for a trim. He points to like a metallic gold. <gasps> yes. I asked the person, how much? Well, uh, the merchant uh, tells you that it's only uh, a gold piece for like four buckets. I am instantly slamming that. Uh, so Ooh. if I get two of the gold and two of the blue. Oh, now that's a souvenir. So how much gold was that again, sir? Just one. Just one piece. Oh, okay, yep. For four, Pete. Mm -hmm. Four? Damn, that's a steal. Okay, yeah. I slammed down the gold. <laughs> oh, something to keep us even when we're sailing. <laughs> so how's how's your trip been, little one? 
met any any interesting I... folk guy, any good stories? It's it's been crazy. Ah, uh, my group is never thought I'd say it crazier than crew back home. Ah, uh, <laughs> really fun. I well, that's a good sign. One of them has two ex-wives. Two ex-wives. <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> I would describe it like that. I don't know if he has more. I'm scared to know now. Should I place bets? Hmm. Uh, maybe my. Uh, he, he almost considers it for a bit, but he has to shake himself out of it. Just like, hey, uh, maybe not the most. Uh, uh, might be in poor taste. As entertaining as it might be. Fritz is going to ask a question to try to. I'm telling you, intentions. Trying to see if Dozen knows that she's met her dad. Hmm. He's like. Was there a certain story you were looking for in particular? Uh, Should I roll for this? Yes, actually. Roll me... Yes. Actually, uh, no. You don't need to roll for this. Uh, roll me... Actually, roll me a performance check. Are you actually okay. trying to, like, hide that you're trying to probe for something? I'm... I'm trying, I, I'm being more facetious, but I'm trying to read him on if he starts to get awkward or if he's like, okay. he's trying to, like he wants to know something in particular, but isn't In that asking. case, give me an insight. An insight, okay. Uh, you know that he's genuinely interested in your trip from what it sounds like. It, it doesn't seem like there's any other kind of like ulterior motive behind his words at all. He's genuinely just interested in the trip and your experience. Well, uh, I've definitely <laughs> I've experienced the world a lot more. I mean, I've seen more Arakoka in my life in these couple of, <laughs> gosh, how long has it been? Months or so? But compared to when we were back at the dock. Aye, uh, they come in lots of different breeds. I didn't, I didn't really know that, yeah. Aye, lots of variety of feathers and colors and stylings all over the continent. You usually stay, stick mm -hmm. to the mainland. Uh, they're not the most seafaring folk, hence why you don't often see some over in Satya. Lots of water over there. Mm. Not good for their feathers. Have you met a lot of Arakoka in your life? Uh, give me a performance check. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, lass, if, if you want to ask me something, you can go ahead and ask. I've got no secrets for you. Hmm. You, I, I, I point to a bench close by. I'm like, you might want to sit down. Uh, all right, and he goes to sit by the bench. Are you about to tell me I'm so... adopted? <laughs> <laughs> no, but remember when you did that for me? Uh, hi, yeah. It was really funny. Uh huh. <laughs> hi, it's, I'm uh... stalling. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, I met my dad. You, oh, Astro did I met you? Astropio. Well, you're my dad, but the. Oh, I know what you mean. But, yeah. And how was he? Hmm. I would say disappointed if I had any expectations. Um, he's a feeble man. Aye. Well, that's a shame. Don't you know him? Aye, all Astrapio. Uh, me and him were good friends. He actually did me a good turn back when I was just a swabby. Uh, you fit for a story time? Yeah, you said were. What happened? Aye, were. All right, then. He uh, just kind of reaches into his jacket and pulls out little snacks. They look like little, like, uh, kind of pretzel sticks. <laughs> and hands them over for you to snack on. I, I guess I sit cross-legged on the <laughs> ground looking at him like a kid waiting for a story. Time. All right, well, strap in, kid. Uh, well, oh, Estrapio and I, he, uh... He did me a good turn back when I was just a swabby. He, uh, I had uh, a right prick as a captain. Let's call him Captain Stinky. Always mm -hmm. giving me the <laughs> stink eye and saw every chance to throw me off the ship, or worse. Uh, 
But uh, during my time as a swabby, I met old Ostrapio. He was a, a weird-looking bird folk, traveling to Satya to learn lore of all things. I know what all, what all that's about, but uh, it didn't mean that me and him got to talk, uh, know each other during the, the sailing back and forth. It turns out he wasn't too liked where he was from, neither. Uh, don't tell nobody, but during his academic days, they nickname him Farty Feathers. <laughs> Man was so caught up in his studies, he neglected his hygiene. Whoa! And you could tell, too. <laughs> Goodness. Wow. Okay. Uh... So, me and him, kindred spirits, shunned by the world, what would throw the worst at us. And one day, that arse Captain Stinky, he finds one of his prized maps to be stolen. And he accuses me of doing the deed. Said I had uh, got enough motive and wanted to jump ship for the mainland. And, I mean, he weren't wrong for both of those things, but I still ain't stole nothing. But nobody had my back, except for old Estrapio. If it weren't for him, I'd probably have been thrown into a jail or shipped off to Trevisetta to slave away at one of them hellish walls they got keeping the blot out. So, he comes to my defense and better yet, finds out that Captain Stinky had his hands in a bit of conspiracy against Satya's lord at the time. So, Stinky lost his sailor's license, his ship, his crew, and was banned from coming within miles of the waters of the Bano Hogir. And then, with the recompense I got from the case, I was able to afford my own ship, the Nado. And the, the very one that you grew up on and used for deliveries. Sounds like a very different man than what I met. He was qu quite... he didn't have much of a backbone. No. And I uh, was fearful of as much as the time went on, because, uh, well... After that ordeal, I ain't seen Estrapio for quite a few years. Uh, near a decade passed, and then he comes to me one day out of nowhere, sailing to Satya, and he looks like shit. Even worse than he did before. Like he was sucked up and spit out by a kraken, and then sucked up and spit out by another uglier kraken. <coughs> so, mm. he comes to me, dripping wet, sailing on a ship what almost sank to the bottom of the ocean, and he asks me for a favor. I say anything. You give me my life and my family, they're nothing too big of an ask. And so he says to me, what about a life? And I say, give or take? I was ready to kill for this man. And he says, giving, two. And I say, what? And he shows me a little wee bird wrapped in a blanket. Couldn't have been even more than a summer old. And he kind of goes to scruff your, your hair. <laughs> he says it's his, but the lady he's with, it didn't work out. And that he could see that if he was to raise you, both of you would probably not make it. Or you would, but he wouldn't be able to make you happy. I didn't push for the details, but I accepted, and you were quite the handful of a baby, I tell you. I didn't have the first clue about parenting, let alone parenting an Anacocra. My parents, all they had to do was give me a slab of meat to put me to sleep, but you, woohoo! I couldn't stop you from exploring every single dangerous crevice you could find. But, uh, a baby. Uh, I didn't know what to do with a baby. One interesting, though, interesting fact, uh, you were a baby that didn't cry. Uh, this one must be on the fritz, I thought. Well, <laughs> best manufacturing error ever, uh, manufacturing error ever, I suppose, because nothing could phase you. You got lucky. I, <laughs> babies usually cry a lot. I cry a lot. But you didn't cry at nothing. In fact, I had to stop you from trying to climb up to the top of the crow's nest. <laughs> but then after that, well... Old Estrapio, he didn't seem to get all that involved. I would write to him just about every other week after he gave you to me. And he'd often only write back the teeniest crumbs. Thanks. That's good to hear. Thank you for doing this. No interest whatsoever. No questions, no concerns, nothing. Now, I ain't one to judge a man what business I not seen with my own eyes, so I like to think he was getting his shit together after whatever put him in such a tough place. But then, he ain't changed after a year. Two years. A decade. I started sending him letters every month after your first birthday, but still none more than a that's good to hear sent back. I keep him up to date on your abouts every month. Same thing. Thanks for the update. Then, after about your, your fifth year... He stops replying. 
I was concerned, but then heard through the grapevine that old Strapio had made it to becoming an officiate of Politrios. I wrote him about two or three more letters that year, but after getting no response back, I stopped writing. I worried that with so little deeper interest in your abouts, I didn't want to bring up this man, what ain't put more than a single sentence to a letter about you. Maybe he didn't want to bear the burden of knowing that he couldn't have raised you. Maybe he was too busy. Maybe he didn't have an interest. I don't know. I ain't a mind reader. But whatever the case, I thought to myself, these letters, they're, they ain't saying nothing. And as much as Estrapio did me a good turn with the Nado, I already took a job that he was too afraid to. We were even now. And I ain't owe him the privilege of knowing one of the coolest, funniest, obnoxious birds in the world if he didn't take the effort to be a part of your life. I didn't want to be burden you with having to know who might as well be a stranger with no involvement. But I am sorry that I took that choice away from you. I, I couldn't have known if you wanted to see the letters. Uh, I do still have them if you want to see them. They're back on the Nado in my storage chest, but uh, like I said, they ain't page turners. No, no, no. I... Those in... <laughs> you know I'm smart. As dumb I am at the same time. I'm smart. You are. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> she smokes at him. Um, same with the day that you basically told me I was adopted. I knew we weren't blood related. I mean, I grew past your height very quickly. Um, I, much as I tried. <laughs> still trying to catch up? Uh, let's, let's wait till I hit my growth spurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But... I was smart enough to know. I didn't need to know. Uh, if I wanted to, I could have asked. You're a very honest... You've always been honest. Aye, it's why uh, the people uh, around you trust you and love you. Uh, precisely why. I'm sure if you were curious about your birth parents, you would have asked. And so I, I didn't feel it necessary to give you information that you weren't interested in. But uh, I'm mm. glad to get that confirmation. That whew, takes a big weight off my shoulders, I'll tell you. This parenting thing, you never really truly know if you're doing the right thing. You did great. Why else would I call you dad? <laughs> oh, thanks. But are you all right with this? I mean, he's practically a stranger to you, and much as I would like for him to get involved, that's your choice. You get to choose who's in your life or not. I... He kind of reached out an olive branch, but it was me twisting his arm to do it a bit. It was fun kind of bullying him, but he can't really, can't hold his liquor. So I don't know if we'll get along. <laughs> uh, well, you'll run into a few of those, but it's not about being able to hold your liquor. It's about if you're drinking out of the same glass or the one that poured I... the liquor. Not, not exactly precisely the same glass. There are German folks out there, but you know what I mean. Maybe he's got some fight in him as much as a coward as he's turned into today, but there was a good man in there somewhere, and I'm sure he thinks he's trying to do as best he can. I won't judge him for intentions, but ultimately, what happens from here, I guess we'll have to see. Yeah. The door is open, but I'm not going to stop and stand waiting. I'm going to keep walking, and the more I walk, the harder it's going to be for him to catch up. Aye, and he's got to be the one to put in the effort. Mm -hmm. I'm anxious though We might. he said I might bump into my mother that is one I don't know um... uh, me neither, <laughs> never really heard much about her and I didn't really want to pry old Estrapio considering uh, yeah. he uh, didn't look too good recounting their relationship, what little he did for all it's worth not saying that he did the right thing but I think it's good that whatever he was with it's over now Mm -hmm. No place to judge. But, bigger question is, you sent, you pushed me to do this, right? Well, you wanted me to go out into the world. Less of a push, but more so I could see that you were looking for bigger things. Ambitious lot that you were. Uh, but I, I'm not trying to push you in anything, Fritz. Whatever you want to do, I'm there to encourage you. Because I might not understand this whole pilgrimage thing, but that don't mean that I can't cheer you on while you do it. But what about my delivery service? 
Oh, we've taken a care of that as best as we could, but, you know, it's maybe we don't take off, uh, take on as many crazy jobs as you would, but, uh, you know, it's part of our job and what brings in the coin. And But if you do wish to return to it afterwards, ain't gonna stop you. I s still don't know what I want to do, but I'll keep you up to date. Definitely. All right. Can't leave you with that business for forever. It kind of is my responsibility. Uh <laughs> if you say so. Ah, say this bench is a mighty depressing. How about we go get some, some drinks and show them a good Satchian pickup, eh? Yeah, let's, let's lighten the mood. I don't really want to think of a deadbeat much longer. All right. Dozen <laughs> is going to bring you along to the tavern for maybe some food, maybe some drinks. Not necessarily alcoholic, as he mentions. It doesn't have to be, because you can party even if you're not drunk. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, we if that is okay, we may move on mm -hmm. to Buck. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If there's, unless there's anything else, Fritz, that you wish to do with those. Nope, I'm just gonna be sitting drinking. All right. So yeah, that will uh, happen in the tavern some other time. But in the meanwhile, simultaneously while you are hanging out with Dozen, Buck, you are having a little bit of uh, card playing with Maro, who after playing a few sets, you can tell he is really bad at the game. So anyway, as I was saying, I mean, that's when I decided to leave and head back to Sat. It's your turn, by the way. Um, oh, head back to, um, head back to Satya. So have you just been just, like, uh, yeah. giving him oh, your yeah, whole just like, story? Oh, oh yeah, it's like way more than I've told anyone else. <laughs> I've just been laying out to him, uh, like kind of up and up, up through the last time that I was in Trevisetta. Mm -hmm. Um, with Pan, um, which is kind of what I'm uh, ultimately building to, uh, to asking him about. Um, oh, goodness. Well, that does and, put a lot of context into perspective. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and it's, uh, you can't play, you have to hear, you, that suit isn't Trump right now, so you can't play it. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I, this game is so confusing. It, it's all right. You, you just have to play, like, maybe 15 or so games before you really get it. But, anyway, what I was saying was... I when I headed back, I, I I I thought that I was in the right, and I I guess I I, I kind of knew deep down in my heart that I didn't. There was no real evidence of it, but I I I thought I, I had made a mistake, and I couldn't really do much about it. I had already left, and I don't know. I just kind of figured I'd. You know, you move from one town to the other, you don't got to go back and face your problems. So I happen to be back and seeing her here. That is quite the way I... to live life. Buck, we all have to answer for our crime sometime. I hear what you're saying. But I don't know. She doesn't want to she doesn't want to talk to me and I can't blame her for it. But I feel I feel like if one of the the reasons that I I guess I kind of knew that this would happen if I went on this adventure because I'd have to be visiting all these places I just don't know what I, I, I'm here and I get some kind of closure in the sense that she doesn't want to talk to me which I kind of suspected the whole time but I don't want to have to leave here not having said something about it I mean I can't force her to talk to me but at the same time I, I'm going to be thinking about I, I, so you want Look, closure, but you're afraid that yours is impending on hers. Hmm. You're much better at inciting this than you are at playing this card. Oh, yes, game. I hear many stories in this tavern. People come in, give me their woes, and, you know, much like yours, it's not always easy. Look, I, I've i recognized in the time that I've been traveling with this group, they're good people, and the more that I speak with them and I see the way that they treat others around them and the way that they've been treating me this whole time it really puts into context as you know because you heard the whole story I'm, I've been a <laughs> dick my whole life well and I've and I've, I've not focused on the right things and I just don't want to 
I don't know why I care about what she thinks of me now, but I want to try to the extent that I can try and fix fix it somewhat. Well, Buck, you know what I think? I think you have a very honest intention about you. And if you simply explain this to her, just be upfront and honest. You might have a chance. <sighs> um, well, might have a chance, I guess, is better than uh, no chance at all. And if you truly uh, believe that this will give you closure, I can't say that you shouldn't pursue it. Because trying to find closure some other way might be more difficult, but it is possible. Ultimately, the decision is yours. I can't stop you. I wouldn't ask you. You also probably couldn't physically stop me if I really, really <laughs> came down to it. He that's now there. He puts an elbow on the the table and like kind of props his chin up. Oh, you'd be surprised. Fifteenth level bug right here. Moro. <laughs> All right, let me be clear. I'm gonna go and do this. I, I'm gonna go talk to her. I, th I appreciate that, but... Very well. I'll be at your funeral. Can I arm wrestle you real quick? Just to, cause I don't know exactly that you think, if you, are you suggesting you're stronger than I am? Oh no, is that what that I, is? I just simply th think that I can stand up to you. That's all. Oh, well that, I, I mean, the, I, it, it, in a strange way, I actually believe that. Um, not in a strange way. Hmm. You're Perhaps working on that insecurity is another journey that you need to figure out yourself. <laughs> but no, nevertheless, I do hope you have a wonderful day. You, uh, good luck uh, with your talking with your ex-wife. And uh, I think if you come out there with a few scars, I think we can consider that a success. Well, thanks for talking to me about it, uh, Morrow. I'll take here. Let me take the card. And here's the. Uh, uh, I'll take the cards back and put the. I take the cards and I put them away and. Uh, um, sorry to get in that weird, th I, I'll work on the insecurity. I'll work on the insecurity too. How about that? Very well. All right. Um, thanks. Well, thank you. And, uh, have a wonderful day. I like awkwardly like reach to like shake his hand. Cause I don't know how to end this. Yeah. He goes and <laughs> shakes I go it shake. as well. I try to like go when he, when he touches my hand, I try to go in for like a handshake hug. And I don't really know if it's like. A good idea? Is it a good idea? Do I get the sense that it's a good idea to go in for the handshake? Uh, give me a, give me a charisma check. You go oh, to like do like the <laughs> hugging thing, but he wasn't going in for a hug, so now you're just kind of like awkwardly. Like, oh, oh, are we? Are we? Uh, uh, oh, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, um, just no. Right, it's well, well, good. I yeah, was good day. Yes. No, no, it's just okay. Good day. But yes. before I go, I just want to say earlier when I said like we're friends and stuff. Um, I, I think I was kind of. Just anxious because no, no, uh, no, I didn't know what to say. But yeah. I really do think I, I really do think I really appreciate you talking to me about all this. Yes, of course, I, yes. I feel like we're friends. Friends? Of course, yes, friends. I'm gonna go talk to my ex-wife and then I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> and as you walk out, we we both slide at, yeah, like down on the other side out. of the door. <laughs> this is happening off screen, Buck. You wouldn't know this, but this is for the other players and just the the story. After Buck leaves, Morrow just like. L loosens his shoulders. Oh. <laughs> I'm, in vacation. I'm in physical, actual pain from how awkward that was. <laughs> so yes, Buck, you head out, and as you head out, you do see uh, Fritz and Dozen kind of head into the tavern, kind of like pass you by. Oh and... uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, good. See, hi guys. Oh, oh, good. That means there's free up. Uh, they freed up a whole table. Ha ha ha! Just pulling your leg. Ha <laughs> Yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> I gotta. Um, I'll talk to you later. All right. So, Buck, where are you headed? I'm gonna go to the Adventurers Guild. You go to the Adventurers Guild. Just kind of swagger my way on inside. Mm -hmm. uh, you swagger Ready. your way on inside, and you do see at the quest board that it is indeed Pam kind of looking it over. And since it is fairly quiet, a lot of the adventurers are already out. The door opens and she goes to look and she sees you and immediately her face scrunches up and she goes back to look at the quest board. Is, are we in, are we like inside the building or are we like outside? Uh, I'll say you're inside of the building. 
and there's like a quest. There's like, is there like anybody around, or is it just? There's a few, her? yeah, a few like adventurer, adventurer guild like officials, kind of uh, staff, just like behind desks writing, um, uh, with just writing some quest papers to be put on the board. They're talking with a few clients and getting like official stamps of approval and stuff, and getting them to sign and things. I'll uh, tip my hat. I've never done that in my entire life. Tip my hat to the uh, to them, and then I'll uh, just like kind of walk up to the quest board and just kind of pretend to be like, oh, like, ooh, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. It's, ah, official, nice, nice. Ham, uh, just, just like, like without looking away from the quest board, you tell me what you want, or else I will assume the worst. Look, um, I, I can we? I know you said you didn't want to talk, but I just one conversation and then I don't have to if you don't want to talk anymore I won't I won't bother you or embarrass you in front of anybody in this town for the rest of the time that I'm here and I give my word on that she I just squints want her to eyes on one condition you help me with this and she holds she takes one sheet of paper off of the quest board and shows it to you and you see that it's a quest oh. slay chimera oh um, you, you want just me to help you with this quest? Yes, my usual party is out right now, doing some small fry, and I was thinking, this is too much for one person, but you are a big man, aren't you? You're big and strong, and you can take on anything. You're certainly dumb enough to try your luck at something stupid, so I could use somebody with that kind of disregard for personal well-being. Look, I've had plenty of regard, all right, for my for my well being in the time that I've got. But yeah, if if that's what it takes to 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 have this conversation, then yes, I, I can. I I might have to tell my friends that I'm doing it. Um, that we're going to fight the chimera. The chimera. I mean, <laughs> um, I might have to tell them that so they don't worry about me. Fine. Is there like it is like a place that it's going on or like how like I don't know exactly I'm reading the details. Yes, so you you notice that uh, the the quest description says that it is just outside the Circa Forest a little bit north uh, east of the town, uh, a little ways in that it has been causing a disruption of the local fauna and calling a bit too many of the herbivores around the area and uh, that it needs to be taken care of. And, uh, yeah, let me I just would say, yeah, you you can let people know. Who do you let know that you're gonna go fight the Chimera? I'll tell just because I know where she is. I'll like let Fritz know. I'll just like I very excitedly like run back like after they saw me leaving and like throw open the doors, and then I'll say I'll like <clears throat> Fritz, um, I'm gonna go kill a monster with my ex-wife, and then I'll turn to uh, <laughs> and, um, I oh god, sure I forgot his name, ex-wife. <laughs> With Morrow, I'm going to turn to Morrow and I'll give him a big wink, and it's so obvious to everybody. Um, and then I'll, I'll <laughs> pat Dozen on the back, and then I'll leave. <laughs> and uh, Fritz I'm not like... giving Fritz time to... to, to re- I mean, she can shout after me if she wants, but I don't... I, I need to go do this. Can Fritz look at Dozen and go, is that like... A, is that how people express love? I, I don't... I... I've not, you know, I'm not... I think that's um, what people, that's the type of expression of a man what's about to go into battle and worries he's not going to come back. Oh. <laughs> and you can see that uh, Maro just like takes a plate and put, like a clean plate, puts it on his chest like it's a hat. I pray for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I'll head back to, uh, I'll get big blind and I'll kind of right. head back in and saunter back into the, uh, Adventures Guild with it. So, Pam and you head north and east towards the Circa Forest, getting closer to Querencia, the life tree. And on the way, like, as you're walking kind of that way, it's a fairly safe route, but she is dead silent. I, I'm, i like, waiting for a moment to say something, um, like, trying to find a good moment. Like, I'm hoping that, like, maybe she'll reference, like, oh, you know, we're a... Uh, like here's some tracks, or like you're like uh, it's cold out or something, so I can like find a way in because I don't really want to initiate it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm trying to find like a good a good time to like bring it up. I'm probably gonna wait until we're too close to where we need to be mm-hmm. t- to be to just say um uh so uh, 
about the conversation. Um, um, did can can we do that now? I guess we're on the way. We've got some time. Ah, she just sighs and turns around. What do you want to talk about, Buck? Um, <clears throat> I. Oh, uh, look. And I'm, I'm like looking at the the maybe maybe we fight the chimera first. No. Where? <laughs> <sighs> yep. Why did I? Let's fight. She just whispers to herself, like looking at the sky, not looking. Why did I agree to do this? Oh. And I'm 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 serious. Yeah, I'm like not gonna talk about it until we fight the. Chi- I want to. I'd rather fight the chimera All first. Right. You because if I die fighting the chimera, then I don't have to have the conversation. So you make it to the kind of area based on the uh, quest giver's description, and you can see that Pam is kind of looking at tracks and stuff, but not communicating anything she learns to you. Just having you follow along in her footsteps, just as she's tracking it herself. Um, if you would like, you can do a little bit of tracking, if you, if you so wish. A survival no, check. I'm, no, that's okay. I'm All too right. uh, distracted. And as she does sneak up on it, um, she holds... You can see that she has got one arrow that's tipped with a glowing kind of pink arcane energy. And you don't quite know what it is, but if you would like, you can roll an Arcana check to maybe see if you might have seen something like this. Yeah, let me roll... I don't have a very good Arcana score. Okay, you know, whatever this is, this is some kind of powerful magic imbued on this arrow, maybe perhaps for slaying monsters or putting them to sleep or something. Not quite sure, Mm -hmm. but this is no ordinary arrow. Mm -hmm. She's looking at it. It seems as though... Here, let me show the Chimera. The Chimera seems to be... Uh, ah. feasting on a most recent kill of some kind. Looks to be some kind of large bovine creature, maybe a bull of some kind. Um, and it's just grazing there. And uh, Pam, it's facing away from you guys. And she just whispers to you, I can't get a good shot. I need to get this in the throat of the lion's head. Can you try and distract it for me? Uh, sure. Um, just don't miss. Um, Buck, give and me I'm gonna... a charisma check. Ooh. Charisma check to don't miss? Check. Okay. <laughs> when you say don't miss, she turns her head around you without turning her <gasps> body. Her eyes are wide and pierce your very soul. You take one psychic damage. What? Oh no! <laughs> what is this woman? <laughs> Okay, I, I've, I've taken one. it. She, she's the his nerve. ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, ex-wife mm-hmm. could just do that. I yeah. turn back. I turn back immediately. I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm, I should have said it. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna try to uh, like get closer to that thing because it's it's in front of us. But I'm just trying to get it to turn around. But I'll step a little bit sideways so that it's not like directly facing where she's hiding because mm-hmm. I don't want it to like. It's got three heads. I don't want it to spot her. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, and then I will, uh, I guess I'll just stand there. I'll put big blind on my back and then I'll just give a whistle to try Mm -hmm. and get its uh, attention. Mm -hmm. All right. So you whistle, it looks at you and it doesn't seem to really care that you're there. It sees you very clearly, but it continues to chow down on this bovine. However, the dragon head is like kind of smoking out its nostrils now at noticing you. Uh, I'll look back at Pam. Is she? What's she doing? You can see that she's still got her bow drawn and steady, just aimed at the chimera. Um, I guess I'll move a little bit closer to it, and then I guess if I'm gonna, I, I guess I'll rage. I'll, I'll rage mm-hmm. so that and see what wild surge thing I get. Okay. Um, to with the hopes that I can like get its attention. I think Great. This is All right. <gasps> it's the first time I've gotten the three. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> so I create like it's a little weird. guy that explodes. Oh, all right. <laughs> it I get it to... looks like a flump for a pixie, but can it look like word? <laughs> <laughs> like a little can... chibi word. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I choose what it looks like? Yeah, go ahead. Can I can I make it like uh I'll start can I make it like a little par- members of my party? So yeah. can I make 
Because I think Aww. to myself, as as I feel the like the magic, the wild magic like surging through me, I want to like think of like, okay, what's the most annoying thing I can think of to <laughs> distract this? And then I make like a little word uh, that appears Buck, within I'm five very feet. Hungry. I would like a pizza buck. <laughs> oh, I'm making Where it speak. <laughs> Where's the nearest cannon burger? <laughs> And I'll I'll give a <clears throat> and then I'll make the word explode. <laughs> oh God! It explodes. <laughs> it does one d six more damage. It explodes and oh uh, the chimera is gonna fail its save. Um, nice. You want me to roll one d six? Uh yeah one d six. So wait. Yeah it, word. Wait it makes a. <laughs> it makes a dex save. Dex save. Uh, mine is uh, my is I think it's it, it rolled a seven it's not gonna make whatever you have <laughs> okay so yes it explodes for max damage and it it flinches and just puts down its uh bovine that it's been munching on and it starts to bound towards you and I need you to make an uh, a dexterity saving throw dexterity saving throw ooh Ugh. it goes God, and goes to push you down on to the grassy ground and you can see the dragon is lifting its head sucking in the air the fire is burning hot as it's getting ready to blast you face first and foo, an arrow just goes into the neck of the lion and it foo, falls just on you it's full weight of the dragon head of the chimera <laughs> <laughs> It has been knocked out cold. You can see that it's still breathing, but Pam comes over and just kind of uh, blows a little bit of her hair out of her face. Oh, good job. I guess you are good for something. <sighs> Thanks. I'm gonna get. It's very heavy. Hold oh, on. Yes, you're very strong, second. so you should be able to handle that. Sure am. I'm not struggling at all. I guess I'm raging, so it may actually be Yeah, easier, you, you can so. easily, you can push it off with a little bit of effort. This thing is pretty massive. And she just <sighs> kind of looks it over. Hmm, that should keep it there for quite a few hours. We'll have to report it to the Adventurers Guild so we can get somebody to come and put it out of its misery proper. Uh, we're not just, uh, I guess it's, we're not going to just take care of it ourselves. It's someone else. It's handles it. quite big, and I don't want to ra waste a lot of resources bashing its brains in over and over again. We need someone over at the guild. They've got monster slaying arrows that can be fired from someone way more proficient with something way bigger than this. And she just shows that she's got a typical longbow. Something forged by giants, made for slaying creatures of this size in as few swipes as possible. Uh, I take a look at the chimera on the ground. You can uh, see that it is magically slept. Whatever arrow she used uh, was something very potent. And um, it's just sleeping. I guess I was kind of hoping for more of a fight. Um, she turns to you. Buck, I never want to look for a fight. Getting out of a situation without fighting is the best case scenario. So tell me what you want to tell me. Pam, I'm, I'm sorry for how things ended between us. It was my fault, and I don't really have an excuse for what I did. Um, you didn't do anything wrong, and despite your willingness to be with me, and as happy as I think we made each other at one point, I didn't have the guts to see it through to the end. She looks down at the grass and takes a deep breath in. Buck, I thank you and I accept your apology, but I cannot forgive you. I'm sorry, I can never forgive you. You didn't just break my heart, you broke my trust in you, in people, in myself. I cannot look at any potential companion the same way again because of what you said to me. You made me trust you. You made me feel like the most important person in the world, and then you took it all away because of your pa stupid paranoia. Every time I find someone friendly or kind or trusting as good to me as they are, as good to me as you were, I always have this nagging feeling in the back of my mind, will it happen again? And I'm not telling you this because I want you to be sorry. I know you're sorry. 
I'm telling you this because I want you to know the weight of your actions and how it can hurt people so that you do not make the same mistake towards anyone else, especially not those well-meaning pilgrims you have with you. Pam, can I just... I, I, I don't have... Those well-meaning pilgrims that are with me right now, they have with them family members, friends, loved ones, visiting them from Sacho where I've been hiding from you and from the rest of the world for what seems like my entire life. And in the time that I've been in Satya, I have acquaintances, I have co-workers, but I don't have any friends or any family that would be willing to come here and visit me. I, I decided to go on an adventure to essentially ensure the safety of this entire place and I've got no one and nothing to be doing it for. And I thought I would find something along the way and maybe I, I could be reminded. Maybe I thought when I saw you or saw someone else that I used to know, I'd think to myself, that's someone I'm doing this for. But I... I as soon as I saw you, I recognized that you'd be frustrated with me, that you wouldn't... I, I didn't know if you'd try to kill me where I stood, and I guess I'm happy that you didn't have one of those monster slaying arrows on you, but I... I, I, I don't... I, I don't have anyone to come and see me, and that's not... That's because of the way that I've treated people. I've been very, very good at hurting people. It's the only thing I feel like I've ever been good at. She shakes her head a little bit, and that is, it is good that you are on this trip, Buck. But if you have no one, then you shouldn't be doing this for someone else, and you should be doing it for you. That is why I didn't want to see you, because I need to heal, and that is how I heal. You need to find something that you can depend on to heal. Because it's not me. I'm sorry. No doubt you might be a better man now, and what you are doing is good. It's good for everyone. But I just can't see you. It, it is better for me to not see you. I'm, I'm not trying to force you into an uncomfortable position on purpose. It's just I... I, I don't... I don't think there's anyone really in Sacha who I can even say all this to. I mean, I just told the the innkeeper pretty much everything between you and me because I, I realized I'd be too embarrassed to bring it up to someone that actually really knows me. And so I can't make this sort of admission to anybody else. I know that when I say this to you, you're not going to say it to anybody else because you want nothing to do with me. And I, I get what you're saying, that you, you got to move on. And I just don't know who else I'm supposed to go to. She holds up one hand. Buck, your feelings, your issues, they are your responsibility. Nobody else's. I'm going back to the guild. She walks away. Um, I will sit down. And just kind of like look at the sleeping chimera. And she turn she stops, turns around. I know I know that the best thing for me to do for myself is to forget you, Buck. So this is goodbye. Please do not talk to me anymore. I won't I won't even turn around, I'll just let her go. She continues. Um I'll take a seat, just like sit down and kind of like look at the chimera that's sleeping. Um, and then I'll take out the all or nothing coin. And I guess I'll just kind of like flip it to see if it lands on heads or tails. Okay, let's see. I Do you want me to actually flip it? You know what? Yeah, flip it. Go ahead and flip it. <laughs> yeah, 1d2. Ooh, that's a... Interesting. <laughs> that's, a, that's a heads. Mm-hmm. 
I guess I'll just pray. Can I pray? You can. Lady Luck. Um. This. This situation that I'm in. I guess. I kind of always presumed luck was easier to understand because it felt like it was out of my hands. But. I'm just like this thing here. I mean. Going about its business. Just doing what it's made for. And then. All of a sudden. Something comes along and ends it. I don't know when that's going to happen to me. But I don't want to be alone when it happens. So if there's um, any luck that I have left. I know I said that I'd use the rest of it to keep the others safe. But I guess if, if at the end of this. I just want them to be there as well and I could maybe I know I said that I didn't want to didn't really matter what happens to me but I'd like to be there with it with them at the end of this I just don't want to have to be alone for whenever that happens and then I I guess I'll just like leave the chimera there and just look at it and just walk off mm. Word, you are sauntering off with Claudio and your lackeys, uh, Lyra and Squirt. Where are you sauntering off to? Uh, well, first off, I'm going to introduce my bestest friends to the new members of our crew, uh, our, our newest lackeys, which would be both butterscotch and efficiency. Mm. And as I do that, I will give butterscotch the last of the leg ointment. Oh, and you do so, and she is in fit perform, uh, fit performance. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, peak performance. Peak I performance. Think. That's yeah. it. Yes, you're right. She's in peak performance. She's very, very well. She looks per like her leg looks like it wasn't even hurt at all. And noticing the other little kobold, she just kind of like stomping her hoof in a little bit of excitement and neighing and going to kind of nibble at them and they're like ha, ha. walk walk slowly hold on you, you you little guys like me but they get scared you know have, have you ever like seen a, a big thing with like a mouse next to it that's kind of what we uh oh okay boss and they just approach it very cautiously almost mimicking your movements just like <laughs> movement for movement like even lifting your hand or taking a step <laughs> They're like a conga like line behind you. Yeah, monkey see, monkey do kind of thing. That I'll like, I'll hand out little pieces of the treats uh, that I bought, like the really expensive horse treats, and I'll let them like feed both efficiency and uh, butterscotch. Yep. They're feeding the horses. Butterscotch is faithful. This is a good horse. You know, once we get back to the island, we don't got too many uses for horses, but maybe it could like carry around all of our good stuff that we get. Ooh, we're gonna get a lot of stuff, boss. We're gonna get so much stuff when I get back. Oh, you don't even know. Like what? What kind of stuff have you got already? Oh, uh, hold on, actually. <laughs> and I like go and I get my bag and I'm like, you're not gonna believe this. I got a two nasty eclairs. I got a fancy <laughs> magic flower. I got these eggs that blow up in your stomach or they make you stronger. There's a, this wand that I have and I'm like flinging them out of my bag. <laughs> There's a little knife. There's a rock that... When you do, they go and catch them before they even hit the ground. <laughs> uh. There's a rock. Don't touch that rock. That one's possessed by a little demon who keeps showing up in my dreams. There's a little iron ring. You know, you can have that. And I give it to Claudio, my scrungly iron Ooh. ring that I got. Ooh. That's a good one. I got a... Oh, this this human skull. And I like do a little chatter. Whoa. Some, some amber. Did you kill that There's guy? Oh yeah, no, nah, he 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 crossed me. He just he came up to me and I was like, I'm gonna cross you. So uh, the lackeys look at each other. Wow, that's where he is now. And some other good stuff. While you're looking through your pack, actually out of your Ooh. bag pops the head of nonstop begonias. <laughs> and you're in my way. There's a bag of beans down there. He he's just looking at you and looking at your lackeys. Your lackeys don't seem to notice him, and he just whispers to you. Ah, I see you have a posse. They're more than that. Is you know it? Is this the start of your reigning empire? It always has been. 
I thought you were on board with that, the idea of me ruling everything, starting with these beautiful kobolds. Yes, I was, and this does give me a lot of reassurance. Please continue. I will observe. And he slinks back into the bag, and his shadowy self dissipates, and your lackeys are like, Oh, boss, you got a friend in there? Something like that, yeah. This is a Caleb City <laughs> skit. I remember there's a guy in a bag. Uh, but I'll, like, shout into the bag, like, stick my head in it. The one of these days, you and me are going to have to have a real conversation about why the hell you're actually here. And then I turn immediately back to Claudio. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's like, a, he's a bunch of flowers, and he's a little demon, and he tells me what to do, and it's never good, but it's pretty cool. Oh, Claudio looks over to the other ones. They nod their heads, nod their heads. <laughs> Can we see him? <laughs> do like a golf clap yeah i wish you could i assume that you could but if you didn't see him now you won't see him now oh okay then maybe we'll see him some other time i i would sincerely hope so otherwise i'm going insane <laughs> all right so there's all the, all the stuff that i got you know i used to have like some slippers i gave those to somebody I, i've got this crown and like a little bandit mask but uh, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Oh, that's a lot of good stuff, boss. Are we gonna take this back to the main, uh, to to our home, back to Satya? You can have the ring, but the rest of it stays with me for now. Oh, okay, okay. And I will take me back to Satya. Oh, all right, all right, all right. But for now, it seems as though you've completely lost direction. Did, did you remember that pumpkins are bigger? Yes. Like, you, do, yeah, do you yes, have boss. pumpkins? Pumpkins are bigger, and uh, get all of the chickens. Get all the uh, no. That's that's not correct. No. You almost fooled me. Get some of the chickens. Oh, oh. When you have two chickens, they make six chickens. Chickens are bigger. That's that. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chickens are chickens, bigger. Chickens are bigger. No, 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 no. Chickens get bigger. Chickens get bigger. Pumpkins are bigger. Pumpkins are bigger. Pumpkins right. start bigger if you steal them from a farm. Oh. Chickens are small. Oh. And they get bigger and they get more chickens. Okay, okay, okay. They all like like nodding and looking at each other they you can tell that they like start scribbling on their hands with their claws even though they have no notepad <laughs> he like looks off into the sky and he's like we should totally just get chickens and not eat them oh what are they for they make more chickens and they make you know the really really tasty little whites the eggs oh eggs they make eggs and then what would, what do we do with the eggs if you leave him for long, are you kidding me? Claudio, come here. And I like grab him by the face and like put his his forehead to mine. Claudio, we eat the eggs. Oh. Eating eggs is what we do, Claudio. And chickens <laughs> make eggs. And then we'll be invincible. Always. We'll never eggs go make hungry. You powerful. Never. We'll live forever. As as, we'll live forever as long as we have the chickens. So. All right, new rule. All right. Don't take all the chickens. Don't eat all the chickens. Don't eat all the chickens. They are right on their palms. <laughs> like in nothing. Yeah, in None nothing. of them know how to write. They've, they've just seen people do that, so they think yeah. it's a smart thing. They probably, like, put, like, three marks on their hand, and that's like, that means don't take all the chickens. Yes, yes. <laughs> like in Sharpie. All right. But in the meantime, I have a new game that I've, that I've devised that I can teach you, and when you go back to Satya, you can use it on people. <laughs> We're specifically looking for people with big smiles and big pants, and big wallets, oh. big backpacks. Uh, uh, all right, yeah. all right. Okay. And I walk him out of the stable, and I'll go, um, I don't know, probably near the Adventurer's Guild. Do right, I bump right. into anybody? Yeah, uh, <laughs> so going near the Adventurer's Guild, you do see someone with big pants, big pockets, someone mm. who might have quite the, a bit of sway because they look like someone high up in the officials. They look like a very well put together guard. Oh no. All right, one. so uh, I, I didn't plan this very well. I should have told you the rules before we got here and saw Mark that fucking shiny. <laughs> so I, I sit him down and I pull out a table and I pull out like a couple of bowls and a rock. And I, I teach them the, you know, the classic grift of like, uh, where is the, the, what bowl is the rock under? Mm. Oh. Uh, but I'll, I'll use my mage hand to, uh, the ledgerman mage hand with the sleight of hand to like hide the rock every time I do it. 
So I'll point to uh, Squirt, and we'll, we'll just be sitting like right here. All right, Squirt. Do you have a good eye on you? Oh yeah, Play sure, boss. Convincing. Which among the the best of you is a good actor? Oh, they look to each other. They look to each other. They kind of talk and nod and whisper, and then they point to uh, Lyra. Lyra. I'm the best boss. You're so dependable. Yeah. You're such a good actor. You're always talking. You're always a, such such a sociable character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need you to stand in front of here and be just just act like you're winning money, like you're beating the game, and that you want other people to beat that game. Oh yeah, sure thing, Squint. boss. Oh man, I'm so rich. I'm getting all this stuff. Oh, I'm so good at this. You're so good at this. All right, Squinch, Squinch, Squirt, you go stand on that rock. Oh yeah. Keep an eye out. All right, you, boss. And maybe <laughs> tell people about how good that game is. Oh wow, this game is crazy. I think I should, I think... We're not we're not playing the game yet. Hold on. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> you, you, you're just shouting about nothing. All right, Claudio, I want you to look around for Mox and tell him about this game, this good game that they're gonna win. Oh yeah, like you got it, boss. That guy with the big with the big pants. Yeah, 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 you got it, boss. And I, I start playing it with Claudio, and Claudio just starts winning, winning Mega Millions, the big bucks. She wins. Uh, Lyra does. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, Lyra. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. For me. I, I don't know. I should, I should uh. assign names. Hold on. Let's see. No, I have it written down. Lyra, uh, nameplate. I'll make it visible for everyone. <laughs> like, the, like the instrument. Boop. Uh, Lyra with a Y and not a yeah. Lyra. Not to be mistaken yeah. for Lyra. Um, let's see. Claudio, Dio, she's right there, and Squirt, the youngest. Young child Squirt. There we go. Okay, there they are. All right, Claudio, big smiles, big pants, big backpacks. Remember that. Big pants, big backpacks. All right. All right. <laughs> And I'll, I'll like start working with you know five gold and then a hundred gold and Lyra's like I'll bet the biggest money I have and we start like shuffling around a bunch of bunch of big money okay. at the table. Give me a performance check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh shoot. Oh, pretty good. Hey. All Woo right. Uh, while you're doing this, you do hear nonstop Begonia's uh, voice whispering in your ear. I question your. Lack of interest of sending them to do the dirty work. Why participate? Because if I don't participate, I'm basically not involved at all. And besides, it's fun. Why don't you participate? You just tell me what to do. You're kind of annoying. Ah, uh, but that's so much work. I already put so much work getting here. Can't we get someone else to do our job? Isn't the, the whole point of having lackeys? Look, Begonia, I don't know what work you do, but you're not doing it right now. And I'm doing work right now. <laughs> this is not helping. Wow, you you took so much money from me. <laughs> and I'm like shutting. <laughs> Claudio notices one of the city guard who is does seem to be a significant mark. A large mm -hmm. kind of violet-skinned tiefling man, very large stature, very mm. bulky, dressed in what looks to be furs and thick le leathers, uh, armor fit for colder climates. And he notices what's going on. You see that it's Captain Javier. There he is. Oh god. And he ah. he notices, and uh, uh, Claudio's like, "Wow, look at that! Oh my gosh, uh, Lyra, you're winning big!" And uh, Javier just kind of stomps on over. Uh, what's going on over here? I'm so upset. I set up this game to win money, and all I'm doing is giving mine away. Mm. A small time <laughs> You look like a particularly lucky person with a lot of money to win and very little to lose. Well, you have some new faces I've not seen in Tigamura. Ah, well, we are a traveling band of gamers. All of you. Yeah. Do we call ourselves chat? <laughs> ah. You are causing quite the bit of chatter. What is it I heard about large winnings? <sighs> And, and when he says all of you, I gesture not just to the kobolds, but like the surrounding group of people passing by. <laughs> uh -huh. Would you like to try your luck? <laughs> you look like you have a lot of it. You got scars. That means you've been to battles and walked away from them with the other guy who didn't. <laughs> uh, you could say that. 
and you can see that this guy is kind of full of himself and he's easy to, to flattery and he's just kind of looking around and he you can tell it doesn't take an insight check to, to tell that he sees you as easy easy money small fry <laughs> and he comes over and takes a look at your little game here oh see this one yeah, it's a simple visual game. It's just a matter of testing your mind, your wit, if you can track my cups. Mm. Let's start simple. Let's do something like a... Uh, what do you got? Five gold? Ten gold? Well, first of all, what am I winning? That'll help me with my wager. Mm. You do seem like a very lucky man. <laughs> what what say you that we, we maybe start the game and I'll do a payout of two to one? Give me a persuasion check. Okay. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> I've seen this grift. How about instead you pack on up and I don't see your face again? Hmm. That is a very cheap wager. All right. Six to one. <laughs> Listen, I'll let you off easy if Hey, hey, hey! He sees, he calls out <laughs> to yeah, Actually, uh, a- as I'm saying this Because I can tell my bluff's been caught Can I do a sleight of hand check to pickpocket? While he's distracted by something else? Yes, do so <laughs> yeah, Okay <laughs> he seems, Something seems to catch his eye and he turns And, okay, let's see You snatch his coin purse for 80 gold pieces. He's been carrying it around. He was getting ready to buy something. Oh. Congrats, word. Oh, no. You, you've got a crime over there. I've got one over here. Goodbye. <laughs> Oi! You over there! And he heads on that <laughs> way. And the lackeys oh. quickly pick up everything, including the rock that they were standing on, and start to follow okay. you. <laughs> you don't need the rock square. <laughs> That's a big rock. <laughs> Are you sure, boss? It's an accomplice. Yes, I'm sure it's a big... It'll stay there. It's oh, fine. Right. It's got no evidence. You better not talk. It points to the rock. <laughs> I, I give the rock like a good eyeing too. <laughs> you, you better keep your mouth shut. Left we, the we... rock to take the fall. <laughs> <laughs> so so the yes, you're 80 gold richer and you can hear okay. in the back of your mind non-stop Pagonius, yes, yes, that's the man from the lake. Good. Would it embarrass you if, if I didn't even remember exactly what happened when I took that money? Or from the not from the lake, from the uh, well. The, the well. Yeah, I sorry. Think, yeah. Oh, I see. No, but the well is what I use to scout out potential investors. Hmm. All right, we really gotta talk business. But right now, I'm with my friends. It, it, that's something we gotta talk about soon, because you've really been trouble in my head. I, I had a bad night last night. And it was your fault. Oh, very well. I admit I've been tight-lipped about the details of our deal. Very well. Oh, <laughs> he's like mocking him. <laughs> <laughs> I do not sound like that. <laughs> you sound exactly like oh. I'm a bad guy. I do bad things, and I tell you to do bad things, but I don't do the bad things. Oh. 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 <laughs> I'm going back into my dimension. I will see you tonight. All right. I didn't even know you had one of those. You don't tell me about yourself. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, word. You're 80 gold richer. You swindle the guard. Hopefully you don't <laughs> see him again, or that he doesn't track what has happened. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll give each of my boys uh, 10 gold apiece, dropping 30 from them. <laughs> All right, Hello, my wonderful. Boy. Oh, I ideally. Help. Thanks, You boss. spend it. Yeah, that's actually a lot compared to what we used to, isn't it? I, I, a bit. Uh, how much is uh, the, the, what's the, 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 the amount we had we could get, like, um, what, what, what is it, fellas? Uh, uh, like a slice of ham? And then they were like, yeah, slice, a slice. Yeah. <laughs> you can get a few honeyed hams with that, Claudio, but you know what I really want to know? Uh, and he kind of looks to the three of them. What is it, boss? What do you actually want? Oh. What is your your greatest desires as, as, as people, as my friends? Well, 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 we want whatever you want, boss. That, this whole time, I've just been looking at, like, you know, the right pieces of ham, you know, the right sizes, the right amounts of food. But 
we're more than that, aren't we? You know, we're, we're bigger than pumpkins. We, we are bigger. We are bigger. They're looking at each other. We're bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Claude, uh, Squirt just speaks up. Why? Well, I, I want to big. I want to get big like you, boss. Uh, but, uh, you, uh, you know, you get big and strong. Squirt, you're like almost as tall as me already. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but you're big on the inside, you know, like in in the head. I want to be smart like you. Hey, Claudio, what do you want? Ah, uh, oh, oh, well. There was that, that that goblin back at uh, Sa Satya. He was uh, real real smart like, and uh, I, I guess I kind of want to be smart too. But he has been reading books and stuff, and he's been lending it to me. And these books, they're like they're crazy. They're like stories that you don't need to get a storyteller to tell you. You don't even have to find an annoying bard. You just read them, and and he's been telling them to me. So like I I want to get a few of those. I want books, not just not, not just to get smart, but because they're fun. Claudio. I had no idea you could read. Oh, I couldn't. He was he was telling me the stories, but he, he that, that goblin he's he's got other things that he's got to do, so he's not available all the time. So I want to learn to read. God, you people are smarter than me. Lyra, what do you want? A big sword. <laughs> A big sword. A big That's... sword. I want it as big as that building. And he, ah, uh, yeah, she points over to the Enchanter's Tower. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, wanna, I want it to be there and to admire it, and I can polish it, and, and it's going to look real nice in front of our cave. Why, why does it need to be a sword if you're just going to look at it, though? Because I was told about this thing called interior design. <laughs> uh, I, too, have heard of interior design. <laughs> And I think a sword will really suit the personality of our of our, our lackeys and, and your your little crew because it will be a deep and sincere metaphor for your power and destructive nature to be feared. And Squirt and Claudio just looks over at Lyra and just like not understanding half of the words that she just said. I think I understand relatively the way you're coming from, Lyra. I respect that a lot, and when I get back to Satya, the first thing I'm gonna do is commission a big sword made of gold. Yeah, and we'll, yeah. We'll put that it. We'll put that down in the sewers. We'll stick it in the ground, and people will know. Yeah. How? And Squirt and Claudio, I'm gonna teach. I'm gonna teach you to. I don't know how to read. We'll pay someone to teach you how to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll thanks, be. boss. You're the best. You're always looking out for us. But we'll be bigger than everything will be bigger than that building. You're asking us all this stuff about what we want. What do you want, boss? <laughs> he just he freezes up. <laughs> Anything at all. You, you, want a, you want a pretty rock? You want some flowers? We can go steal some flowers. Hey. I don't know. Oh, that's okay, boss. You take your time. I'm sure there's something cool that you got on your mind. It's a plan, huh? You always got a plan. Uh, don't worry. Yeah. I... I I got a plan. I, I, I got s something that I, I want. Oh, we got ten. Can we go spend this, boss? They got a market over there. Maybe we could get some stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. They, you know what? Take, take some more gold. And I, I give each of them the five for a total of or fifteen. Hmm, for a total hey, he's, of he's uh, kind of stands. forty-five yeah. out of your out of your eight. Yeah, I add, I added that to. Oh yeah, let's go buy some stuff. And they kind of uh, happily go get 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 something fancy, get some good food. Saunter off, leaving you with the question: What do you want? He kind of sits up against the adventurers guild and slumps down. He'll stay there. And I think That's, that that might be a good place to go to Lyra. Yeah. <laughs> For our solo adventures, we have chosen to be sad. <laughs> We're all a bit angsty today, we aren't are we? All a bit <laughs> yeah, jeez. Am I gonna have to be the well-adjusted one today? All right. <laughs> we find we find Lara's ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest twist of my life. <laughs> All right. So, Lara, you are kind of walking the markets with Shemaya. Let me get her portrait up. Yeah. And she's just kind of making small talk and trivia of like, oh, that one is good for these kind of ailments. Oh, that one, she I didn't know that that still grew up uh, down here. All the various kind of innocuous stuff and trivia. 
and you can see that she is actually struggling to make small talk with you, and that there are like swaths of silence that she tries to break up with cool. little facts and things. You can tell she normally, if she doesn't have anything to say, she says nothing. So it's odd right. that she's so talkative today. Hmm. I think Lyra is not going to start talking about her theories about what's going on with, with old Deosia and such, like, until we are out of a crowded area, because, uh, like, the one thing she internalized from the, the political shenanigans that we've been struggling through is, like, oh, we probably shouldn't make it publicly known, all this weird conspiracy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and that means not where we can be overheard. So mm -hmm. um, I think she'd want to, like, steer the walking path sort of closer to the outskirts of town. Okay. Uh, if we could. If, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. if you want to make that apparent in your body language, like, you're able to do it subtly enough that Shamaya could probably pick it up as well. Like, you communicate on more subtle means and, uh... Yeah, anyways. I have a feeling Shamaya is better at telling when Lyra is really tense yeah. than Lyra is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, Without, yeah. yeah, kind of like a secret language that you have, and she's able to pick mm -hmm. up on it and able to go to a clearing and she goes, oh, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps this might be a good place to set up shop then. Yeah, uh, like actually, like takes a deep breath for the first time since we've been in the uh, in the town. Um, we investigated a ruin in Old Deosia oh, to aid the you dragon do, Sergei. Oh, I say we actually set up shop, and she conjures oh. forth. She pulls out kind of a uh, strangely crooked-looking tree branch from her uh, robes. You can tell that this is the staff she uses as the focus of her spells, she makes oh. a large circular motion and conjures kind of a small little hut kind of out of the land oh. as roots sprout out of the ground and form a little hut about the size of an outhouse. And a kind of oaken door appears. She opens it up, and you know that she had just cast Tiny Hut. Oh, heck yeah. I will go inside the Tiny Hut. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, inside, uh, she also hobbles in behind you. There's, it's like a large cottage-like uh, room with silky curtains covering windows. Uh, there's overgrown moss and vines and algae everywhere, uh, kind of in the damper corners. Uh, there are various bookshelves with dusty tomes that look barely opened. A lot of them seem to be the same book as well, many, many copies. Huh. This is the coziest Lyra has been since we left uh, Satya. She kind of uh, shuffles a few of the books beside, and with your passive perception, you can see that they say Ecolo Ecology of Alinthi, Chapter 1 to 8 by Shamaya of Hogir. Huh. Did I know if she'd, like, did I know that she'd written that before? No, this, <laughs> or... is, this is not information that you're privy to. Cool. But pardon the mess, it's... Uh... I've not had a need to use this place since my own pilgrimage. I've a very special cauldron for certain things that I like to use on my journey. So, uh, yes. I need to remember that. So you wish to speak with me about something and you wish that uh, wandering ears don't listen in? Yes, I have been warned that perhaps the reason why this was such difficult information to find is that there may be a perverse incentive to keep it hidden. And mm. our mission is too important to allow such a thing to potentially impede our collection of the Dragon Hearts. But something's going on, and I'm worried. <sighs> we investigated a ruin in Old Deosia at the behest of Sergei the Dragon of Kalitrios. Um, and many things were very wrong with it. it the ruin seemed almost artificially created, dressed up with false corpses of mechanites. It was very strange. There was a layer to the ruin that had been concealed, and in it there were a form of ghost I wasn't familiar with, strange little pockets of memory from the last moments of these people's lives. And the people of Old Deosia, it seems, were not wiped out in conflict with the blot, but with us, with Alinthi. Mm. And... And I'm going to pull out the uh, the withered root that mm. I was given by Fritz last time. These were all through the complex. I... I fear that... Could the life tree itself have been weaponized? 
she, her eyes, you see, widen at that. It is not a theory I've ever had in my mind. But perhaps we may find out something about these roots. And she uh, plucks it out of your hand and yep. examines it, turning it every which way. Fascinating. The roots yes. of Corencia, withered and dead. Yes. And the tree itself still alive and thriving as near as we can tell, but a plant can survive with some of its roots damaged. That is true, but the roots are commonly patrolled to make sure that there is no damage, and usually any damage is repaired as soon as they can find it. This is intriguing indeed. Hmm. She reaches to uh, her cauldron and mm -hmm. kind of takes a vial out of her coat and pours it in that fills it's a tiny little vial about the size of her palm and she pours it into the cauldron and it fills up almost all the way to the brim oh so many wonderful toys hmm here uh, hmm. Da, da, da. I have a few regions that will break down these roots into its base components and we can cross reference them with the alchemical and arcane makeup of anything else I have logged in my notes this will oh, excellent. take quite a bit of time, a few hours, so until then, we do have the afternoon to ourselves. Is there mm. anything you wish to know about my journeys into the ruins, as I have not encountered such things? Yes, I was curious about your pilgrimage. I, The impression I get is that we've been encountering significantly more resistance from the blot than previous pilgrimages. Hmm. That is fascinating. Usually they are, their attacks are random and without reason. The fact that they have been There's... targeting you specifically implies that perhaps there is a bit more consciousness to the blood than we had initially anticipated. I worry there may be considerably more. When I was holding all the hearts, they targeted me almost exclusively. And Buck, you, you've met Buck. He managed to arrange a form of communication with one of them, an unusual blot that appears as a tall cyclopean shape he gave it two playing cards and said one means yes the other no and they carried on some conversation before i saw it make a threatening move and struck it with lightning that is fascinating indeed that the blot would not act on pure instinct and communicate with you it concerns me i I do not know if something has changed within the makeup of the blot or if something is being revealed that has been true the whole time. And our encounter with the ghosts of old Deosia makes me suspect the latter, but... Hmm. I worry that if the tree itself were used for such a purpose, collecting the dragon hearts is vital, and we will do such a thing, but... I find myself questioning the very foundations our kingdom was built on, and the role the tree plays among them. Oh, that it would happen now of all times. Excuse me? <laughs> she just sighs and uh, takes a seat. This is all a lot to take in. Yes, rather. I, I apologize that uh, I may tangent our conversation, but... Lyra, I must admit that I am in my twilight years and the work never ever seems to ever be done. There's always a world that needs to be saved and a problem to be solved, and now, of all times, when I am the most hands-off, it appears that the world needs work more than ever, and... Uh, here we are, meant to be hanging out, and yet we find ourselves in another situation to take care yes, of another I... important quest. Yes, I do apologize. No, no, what you talk about is important, but it is a conflict of my mind that has weighed on me quite a while. It has? It has, after being pilgrim for only two decades, and yet doing all the work that I do for the lords, for Elinthi. <clears throat> While the brew goes on, Perhaps we could turn to lighter matters for the bit, as important as it is. Yes, that... yes. I suppose Alinthi will not appreciably change in the time it takes. Yes. Hmm. Has Sachia been keeping well? It, it has. Uh, that old uh, 
dwarven man, Dozen, has uh, been very friendly with me and, well, you know, I've never been all too social, even during my own pilgrimages and when I was with Jade, who's much more the conversationalist, and it's difficult to me to entertain an audience. It's yes. very strange. It's like I've forgotten how to talk to uh, talk to anyone about anything that wasn't work, and I feel that mm. especially with you, Lyra, and I worry that pragmatism doesn't afford much entertainment. Have you been enjoying your company with, uh, with your fellow pilgrims? I have. It's, it's interesting. I thought it would be more difficult, but... I find that before I knew them better, I second-guessed myself more, and the more comfortable I have become around them, the less I feel that I have to change. It's strange. I thought I would have to, that in order to do this mission, I would grow beyond my limits and become somebody I didn't recognize, but instead it seems I've found people who appreciate what I can give them already. Hmm then you're already well on your way. She looks to the ceiling as the brew is just kind of like forming a bit of a mist, kind of rising up and forming little droplets. Hmm. Tell me something about you, Lyra. Not about this work, not about your pilgrimage, just about you. Oh. Um... I had a very interesting drink on the train. It tasted like meat, but somehow not in a bad way, but also not like soup. And did you like that drink? I think I did. You hear, a very rare occasion, Shamaya chuckles to herself. My goodness. You know, you probably can tell, but I like mushrooms. <laughs> I always found them fascinating. Not quite a plant, not quite an animal. A unique kind of life that breaks tradition in its ways of existence, yet simultaneously completely natural. Uh, yes. I'm no poet, but I find a kinship with the various species of fungi. They are uh, distinct uh, from nature, but still an important part of it. Even if most of it may smell strange to any animal with sense, but if you look past its potential macabre nature, you can often find something special, even beautiful. Yes. It does seem that the strange diversity of the world is what gives it its beauty, rather than our ability to categorize and understand it. Hmm. Uh, Lyra, I must confess, a, a reason that pushed uh, me for our visit was not merely recreational, but I, I must hmm? admit, I, I do have a few regrets in life, oh. and I, I feel quite a heavy burden of regret fear that I might oh not have prepared you enough for this world and regret that I've not provided you with the best of emotional support so I am glad that you're, you have found companions to provide that for you where I have not Shamaya, what you've provided for me is it is entirely different than what I have with my fellow pilgrims but it is no less vital hmm. if we are to indulge in metaphor You have provided the soil that I've grown in, and now as I am stretching towards the sun, my roots must still remain planted in the earth. Huh. Perhaps you have been hanging around some bards. Ugh, I hope not. <laughs> she chuckles again. Uh, since you've left Sachi, I'm concerned if you are prepared to be on your own without me, only to realize that being on your own may has proven more beneficial to you than... Well, I could ever have hoped, and I am approaching my twilight years and may soon have to depart Alinthi. Uh, it was only once you became pilgrim that I ever become awash with these doubts, but seeing you now, I am confident that you don't need me anymore, and uh, pardon my melodrama, but I believe that that is something worth commemorating. I am happy, I think, that you find comfort in this, but... I do not believe that I do not need you anymore. No, perhaps you'll come to realize that in time. 
That's all right. If you still feel the need to lean on me, I am happy to provide you with some support. And she turns, she looks down, and she goes to put her hands on her little mushroom top, lifts it up. And she looks to you. You can see the rare times you have seen her face turns to you for no one could ask for a better daughter. Oh, oh God. <laughs> the face reveal. We got the face reveal. Uh. <laughs> is she a little tiefling? She is a tiefling. Uh, She's always, yeah. we've known that, haven't we? Well, I, mean, yeah. I thought, that, sorry. I, I think, <laughs> good. I think Lyra, like, she's, face she's, doesn't move, but immediately, like, two, like, fat tears <laughs> just <laughs> down. Um, oh. tears. And I think she just, like, kind of stiffly and slowly, because she doesn't want to overstep, but I think she hugs Shemaya. Yeah, she gently yeah. caresses your back and gives you a gentle little embrace as you're sitting on the floor. Oh. Hmm. It's a shame the world always needs saving. I'm rather happy to have something to do. And you hear like some bubbling coming from the cauldron behind you. And Shemaya says, well, it appears that that might be our cue. I think the brewing is done. Ooh, yes, let's unravel this particular mystery. And she puts her hat back on, her little mushroom veil, and goes to see the, the little swirls and uh, she points out the various different colorations in it. Uh, it's broken mm -hmm. down. Let's see. Uh, there, you can see that there is a little bit of... Wait. Uh, this can't be. The, what is it? The roots components. These, these dead roots. She goes, she puts one finger kind of in the brew uh, and puts it under her veil to give it a taste. Oh my and god. And then she spits it out. Poof. No. These roots, they have the same arcane makeup as the blood. Oh, dear. I fear that I am almost not surprised, but... Doesn't that mean that the blot is the tree? There was an element to our visions that we only got a glimpse of, where on the attack on old Deosia, we saw clearly the the emblem of Alinthi, we know who they were fighting, but there was a moment when roots erupted from the ground, which we found evidence of in the dungeon, and the people near the roots transformed into something that we could not see. My obvious suspicion was that they became the blot, and now I fear that this may have been confirmed. Shemaya looks around and making sure there's no one around. Mm -hmm. This has grave implications about the kingdom. I urge you, keep this information to yourself. I will stay in contact. But until then, trust no one but your most stalwart companions with this information. Of course. And will, be safe. I'll look into this and investigate where I can. But until then, every official is a suspect. Hmm. Very well. And please be careful. I know hmm. Satya is outside the range of many of the lords, but... Trevor said is reaching further every day. Aye. And that's going to be the end of Lyra's story. Yeehaw! <laughs> and before we end the session, oh, there's boy. one last little encounter that happens. As Buck, eventually sometime, oh. you head back mm -hmm. to the town, just walking back eventually, and you are passed by by a few adventurers of whom you don't recognize, but they've got some like heavy equipment uh, like a cart to pull the body of the chimera back. A cart, you say? <laughs> One of those cargo. <laughs> I steal like it. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're getting closer and closer to the town, you see someone in familiar robes. Hmm. And Turk it is Turk an orcish Pope. woman dressed oh. in violet. Oh no! With a large, <gasps> wide brim hat. It's the weather witch. Oh. Oh, she ain't dead? Wait, she's here though. And she huh. kind of standing of all outside, right outside the town to greet you. Ah, hello, mm. Buck. Has luck been treating you well lately? Uh, I 
guess you could say that it's kind of been up in the air. Hmm. Uh, speaking of up in the air, what what is it that you're doing here? Oh, I'm just checking in on my favorite pilgrims from Satya. Everyone else got a nice reunion. It wouldn't be fair if I didn't have the chance to meet my old confidants, yes? Look, I... Uh, I I'm, I'm really, really in a bad mood right now, so if you need to talk about something, just do it plainly. Hmm. Do you have in any interest in the gods, Buck? Um... I look down at the coin. I guess you could say that, yes. Well, I have reason to believe that in some of the old world ruins, some way south of here, there is one with ancient arcane technologies, powerful artifacts that will allow us to speak directly with the gods. But I need some help, and you are the closest things I have to a familiar presence. And if Depressing. you wish to help me with this, you may have your own chance to speak with the divine of your choosing. You're saying that I can speak with any divine of my choosing? She smiles. Well then, what is it that you need us to do? We're going to end the session there. Yeah! Oh Cinema! That's great. Oh, no! <laughs> Word would like to speak to his higher self. <laughs> I already I already bunk with the deity. His name is the God King Word. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if we call up Bahamut and he's like, Ah, oh, my incarnation. How goes this life? <laughs> it is me, is it not?